Welcome to part nine of our reading of the book of Jubilee. Can you believe we are on part nine? As I said on David's show last Tuesday, this book of Jubilees has turned into an epic and I am enjoying every minute of it. I hope that you are too. As I said on David's show, the stuff that we're getting into, all these stories are really like our soap operas. And I think it would be so cool in the future if there is a film student out there that would make a mini series or a movie just on the book of Jubilees. Now, if this is your first time joining us on this channel, then I would highly recommend going back and listening to parts one through eight first of the book of Jubilees before jumping in at part nine. We're kind of halfway through the book of Jubilees. So even though it is a lot like the book of Genesis from the Bible, there are some things that are different. So I would highly suggest going back and listening from the very beginning. In the description box below, I'm also adding the playlist from the Dark Outpost where you'll find all the other books that we've gone through as far as the missing and banned books of the Bible. Once again, if you would like to be more of a participant in this discussion and hear more of a thorough discussion on these banned books of the Bible, then please join us on the Dark Outpost on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock where we go into it live. Now, if you're not able to join live, you can also get the recap of the episode on the Dark Outpost with David and me after the show has aired on David's platform. But as always, if you are unable to join us on the Dark Outpost, then this is why I do the recap on Wednesdays. Now, as always, I want to give a very, very, very special thank you to all of our producers here at Esoteric Atlanta, as well as our patrons. Without you guys, our work would not be possible. Your funding allows us the flexibility to be able to do deeper dives into these subjects that we get to talk about and present to you on this channel. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all you do. So today we're starting with chapter 30, and this is Dina Ravished, Slaughter of the Shechemites, Laws Against Intermarriage Between Israel and the Heathens, and the Choice of Levi. Now this uh, is told in the book of Genesis in chapter 34, but as always, there are more details into the story of Dina in the book of Jubilees than there were in the canonized Bible in the book of Genesis. The big difference we're gonna see here is Dina's age. Now we know throughout this book, there has been a lot of talk of incest with the Canaanites and especially with Sodom from Sodom and Gomorrah, as well as the law against eating blood. These have been the two big topics that have really stood out to me. Two topics that I probably would not have understood 10 years ago before the Great Awakening started, but now it's pretty obvious what this is referring to. And it makes you wonder if maybe Genesis was in fact really edited. We know it was. We know that the Bible was edited during the Council of Nicaea by Constantine, but if they actually took out Dina's age from the book of Genesis in order to kind of gloss over this story that we're gonna get into with Dina. Now again, Dina is Jacob's daughter. Jacob has, or is on the way to having the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 sons, but she is his daughter. So here we go. We're starting with chapter 30. And in the first year of the sixth week, he went up to Salem, to the east of Shechem in peace in the fourth month. And there they carried off Dina, the daughter of Jacob, into the house of Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, the prince of the land, and he lay with her and defiled her, and she was a little girl, a child of 12 years old. Okay? That's what was left out of Genesis, that she was a little girl, that she was only 12 years old when this happened to her. And he besought his father and her brothers, and she might be given to him to wife. And Jacob and his sons were wroth because of the men of Shechem, for they had defiled Dina their sister, and they spake to them with evil intent, and dealt deceitfully with them, and beguiled them. And Simone and Levi came unexpectedly to Shechem, and exalted judgment on all the men of Shechem, and slew all the men whom they found in it, and left not a single one remaining in it. They slew all in torments, because they had dishonored their sister Dina. So they went basically ape shit on this whole little kingdom because of what the prince of the land had done to their sister. 
and thus let it not again be done from henceforth that a daughter of Israel be defiled, for judgment is ordained in heaven against them, that they should destroy with the sword all the men of the Shechemites, because they had wrought shame in Israel. And the Lord delivered them into the hands of the son of Jacob, that they might exterminate them with the sword and execute judgment upon them, and that it might not thus again be done in Israel, that a virgin of Israel should be defiled. And if there is any man who wisheth in Israel to give his daughter or his sister to any man who is the seed of the Gentiles, he shall surely die. And they shall stone him with stones, for he hath wrought shame in Israel. And they shall burn the woman with fire, because she hath dishonored the name of the house of her father, and she shall be rooted out of Israel. And let not an adulteress and no uncleanliness be found in Israel throughout all the days of the generations of the earth. For Israel is holy unto the Lord, and every man who hath defiled it shall surely die. They shall stone him with stones. For thus hath it been ordained and written in the heavenly tables regarding all the seed of Israel. He who defileth shall surely die, and he shall be stoned with stones. And to this law there is no limit of days, and no remission, nor any atonement, but the man who hath defiled his daughter shall be rooted out of the midst of Israel, because he hath given to his seed to Moloch, and wrought impiously so as to defile it. So we're talking again about the Canaanites that still rule our world today, and how they practice these particular religions like praising Moloch and giving their children to Moloch. I mean, this if you're on this channel, you're very, very, very well aware of this. And I was listening to Melissa Red Pill the Nation. She actually kind of brought this up in one of her, her conversations with Mickey Klon, where they were talking about how Jacob had four wives. This we know, we read this last week, where he had Leah and Rachel, who were sisters, but they all, he also had their handmaidens, their servants, who were not the same race. And so when we're creating these 12 tribes of Israel, we're seeing these 12 sons that are literally of different races that will scatter around the world. And this, again, is interesting because we see this, or we saw this, rather, in the book of the Holy Twelve, where Jesus talks about the Israelites not necessarily being just the people of Israel, but even the Gentiles as well. And so we're seeing a lot of cross-reference here. And so this is super interesting. And it, of course, makes way more sense now when we know what we know. So verse 11, And do thou, Moses, command the children of Israel to exhort them not to give their daughters to the Gentiles and not to take for their sons any of the daughters of the Gentiles, for this is abomination before the Lord. So again, God is talking to Moses and telling Moses the story on Mount Sinai. For this reason I have written for thee in the words of the law all the deeds of the Shechemites which they wrought against Dinah, and how the sons of Jacob spake, saying, We shall not give our daughter to a man who is uncircumcised, for that were a reproach upon us. And it is a reproach to Israel, to those who give and to those who take the daughters of Gentiles, for this is unclean and abominable to Israel. And Israel will not be free from this uncleanliness, for it hath a wife of the daughters of Gentiles, or hath given any of its daughters to a man who is any of the Gentiles. For there will be plague upon plague, and curse upon curse, and every judgment and plague and curse will come down upon him, if he do this thing, or hide his eyes from those who commit uncleanliness, or those who defile the sanctuary of the Lord, for those who profane his holy name. Then will the whole nation together be judged for all the uncleanliness and profanation of this man. And there will be no respect of persons, and no consideration of persons, and no receiving at his hands of fruit and offerings, and burnt offerings and fat, nor the fragrances of sweet savor, so as to accept it, and so fare every man or woman in Israel who defileth the sanctuary." For this reason I have commanded thee, saying, Testify this testimony to Israel. See how the Shechemites fared and their sons, how they were delivered into the hands of two sons of Jacob, and they slew them under tortures, and it was reckoned unto them for righteousness, and it is written down to them for righteousness. And the seed of Levi was chosen for the priesthood, and to be the Levites. 
that they might minister before the Lord as we continually, and that Levi and his sons may be blessed forever. For he was zealous to execute righteousness and judgment and vengeance on all those who arose against Israel. And so they inscribed as a testimony in his favor on the heavenly tables, blessing and righteousness before the God of all. And we remember the righteousness which the man fulfilled during his life at all periods of the year until a thousand generations, they will record it. And it will come to him and to his descendants after him. And he hath been recorded on the heavenly tables as a friend and as a righteous man. All this account I have written for thee and have commanded thee to say to the children of Israel that they should not commit sin, nor transgress the ordinances, nor break the covenant which hath been ordained for them, but that they should fulfill it and be recorded as friends. But if they transgress and work uncleanliness in every way, they will be recorded on the heavenly tables as adversaries, and they will be destroyed out of the book of life. And they will be recorded in the book of those who will be destroyed with those who will be rooted out of the earth. And on the day when the sons of Jacob slew Shechem, a writing was recorded in their favor in heaven that they had executed righteousness and uprightness and vengeance on the sinners. And it was written for a blessing. And they brought Dina, their sister, out of the house of Shechem. And they took captive everything that was in Shechem. So they basically ransacked the place their sheep, their oxen, and their asses, and all their wealth, and all their flocks, and brought them all to Jacob their father. And he reproached them, because they had put the city to the sword. For he feared those who dwelt in the land, the Canaanites and the Preziites. And the dread of the Lord was upon all the cities which are around about Shechem, and they did not rise to pursue after the sons of Jacob for terror had fallen upon them. So this brings us to chapter 31. Jacob's journey to Bethel and Hebron. Isaac blesses Levi and Judah. And on the new moon of the month, Jacob spake to all the people of his house saying, purify yourselves and change your garments and let us arise and go up to Bethel where I vowed a vow to him on the day when I fled from the face of Esau, my brother, because he hath been with me and brought me into this land in peace and put ye away the strange gods that are among you. And they gave up the strange gods and that which was in their ears and which was on their necks, and their idols, which Rachel stole from Laban, her brother, and gave wholly to Jacob. And he burnt and brake them to pieces and destroyed them and hid them under an oak, which was in the land of Shechem. And he went up on the new moon of the seventh month to Bethel, and he built an altar at the place where he had slept. And he set up a pillar there, and he sent word to his father Isaac to come to him to sacrifice and to his mother Rebekah. Isaac said, Let my son Jacob come, and let me see him before I die. And Jacob went to his father Isaac and to his mother Rebekah, to the house of his father Abraham. And he took two of his sons with him, Levi and Judah. And he came to his father Isaac and to his mother Rebekah. And Rebekah came forth from the tower to the front of it to kiss Jacob and embrace him. For her spirit had received when she heard, Behold, Jacob thy son hath come, and she kissed him. And she saw his two sons, so her grandsons, and she recognized them and said unto him, Are these thy sons, my sons? And she embraced them and kissed them and blessed them, saying, In you shall the seed of Abraham become illustrious, and ye will prove a blessing on the earth. And Jacob went in to his father Isaac, to the chamber where he lay, and his two sons were with him. And he took the hand of his father, and, and stooping down, he kissed him. And Isaac clung to the neck of Jacob his son, and wept upon his neck. And the darkness left the eyes of Isaac, and he saw the two sons of Jacob, Levi and Judah. And he said, Are these thy sons my sons? For they are like thee. And he said unto him that they were truly his sons. And thou hast truly seen that they are truly my sons. And they came near to him, and he turned and kissed them, and embraced them together. And the spirit of prophecy came down into his mouth, and he took Levi by his right hand and Judah by his left. And he turned to Levi first, and began to bless him first, and said unto him, May the God of all, the very Lord of all the ages, bless thee and thy children throughout all the ages. 
And may the Lord give to thee and to thy seed greatness and great glory and cause thee and thy seed from among all flesh to approach him to serve in his sanctuary as the angels of the presence and as the holy ones. Even as they will the seed of thy sons be for glory and greatness and holiness. And may he make them great upon all the ages. And they will be princes and judges and chiefs for all the seed of the sons of Jacob. And they will speak the word of the Lord in righteousness. And they will judge all his judgments in righteousness. They will declare my ways to Jacob and my path to Israel. The blessings of the Lord will be given in their mouths to bless the seed of the beloved. Thy mother hath called thy name Levi, and justly hath she called thy name. Thou wilt be joined to the Lord and be the companion of all the sons of Jacob. Let his table be thine, and do thou and my sons eat thereof. And may thy table be full unto all generations, and thy food fail not unto all ages. And let all who hate thee fall down before thee, and let all thy adversaries be rooted out and perish. And blessed be he that blesseth thee, and cursed be every nation that curseth thee. And to Judah he said, May the Lord give thee strength and power to tread down all that hate thee. A prince shalt thou be, thou and one of thy sons, over the sons of Jacob. May thy name and the name of thy sons go forth and transverse every land and region. Then will the Gentiles fear before thy face, and all the nations will quake, and all the people will quake. In thee shall the help be of Jacob. And in thee shall be found the salvation of Israel. And when thou sittest on the throne of the honor of thy righteousness, there will be great peace for all the seed of the sons of the beloved, and the blessed will he be that blesseth thee. And all that hate thee, and afflict thee, and curse thee shall be rooted out, destroyed from the earth, and accursed. And turning, he kissed him again and embraced him and rejoiced greatly, for he had seen the sons of Jacob, his son, in the very truth. And he went forth between his feet and fell down and worshipped him and blessed him. And Jacob rested there with Isaac, his father, that night, and they ate and drank with joy. And he made the two sons of Jacob sleep, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And it was counted to him for righteousness. And Jacob told his father everything during the night, how the Lord had shown him great mercy, and how he had prospered him in all the ways and protected him from all evil. And Isaac blessed the God of his father Abraham, who had not withdrawn his mercy and his righteousness from the sons of his servant Isaac. And in the morning Jacob told his father Isaac the vow which he had vowed to the Lord, and the vision which he had seen, and that he had built an altar and that everything was ready for the sacrifice to be made before the Lord as he had vowed, and that he had come to set him on an ass. And Isaac said unto Jacob, My son, I am not able to go with thee, for I am old, and not able to bear the way to go. Go, my son, in peace, for I am one hundred sixty-five years this day. I am no longer able to journey. Set thy mother on an ass, and let her go with thee. And I know, my son, that thou hast come on my account, and may this day be blessed on which thou hast seen me alive, and I have also seen thee, my son. Mayest thou prosper and fulfill the vow which thou hast vowed, and put not off thy vow, for thy will be called to account as touching the vow. Now therefore make haste to perform it, and may he be pleased who hath made all things to whom thou hast vowed the vow. And he said to Rebekah, Go with Jacob thy son. And Rebekah went with Jacob her son, and Deborah with her, and they came to Bethel. And Jacob remembered the prayer with which his father had blessed him and his two sons, Levi and Judah. And he rejoiced and blessed the God of his father Abraham and Isaac. And he said, Now I know that I have an eternal hope, and my sons also before the God of all. And thus it is ordained concerning the two And they record it as an eternal testimony unto them on the heavenly tables, how Isaac blessed them. This brings us to chapter 32, Levi's dream at Bethel. He is appointed to the priesthood. Jacob celebrates the feast of the tabernacle and offers tithes, the institution of tithes. 
and abode that night at Bethel, and Levi dreamed that they had ordained and made him a priest of the Most High God, him and his sons forever, and he awoke from the sleep and blessed the Lord. And Jacob rose early in the morning on the fourteenth of this month, and he gave the tithe of all that came with him, both men and cattle, both of gold and every vessel and garment. Yea, he gave tithes of all. And in those days Rachel became pregnant with her son Benjamin. And Jacob counted his sons from him upwards, and Levi fell to the portion of the Lord. And his father clothed him in garments of the priesthood and filled his hands. And on the fifteenth of this month, he brought to the altar fourteen oxen from amongst the cattle, twenty-eight rams, forty-nine sheep, seven lambs, twenty-one kids of goats as burnt offering on the altar of sacrifice, well-pleasing for a sweet savor before God. This was his offering in consequence of the vow which he had vowed that he would give a tenth with their fruit offering and their drink offering. And when the fire had consumed it, he burnt incense on the fire over the fire, and for a thank offering two oxen and four rams and four sheep, four he goats and two sheep of a year old, and two kids of the goats. And thus he did daily for seven days. And he and all his sons and his men were eating this with joy during the seven days, and blessing and thanking the Lord who had delivered him out of the tribulation and had given him his vow. He tithed all the clean animals and made a burnt sacrifice, but the unclean animals he gave not to Levi his son, and he gave them all the souls of the men. And Levi discharged the priestly office at Bethel before Jacob his father in preference to his ten brothers, and he was a priest there, and Jacob gave him his vow. Thus he tithed again the tithe to the Lord and sanctified it and became holy unto him. And for this reason it is ordained on the heavenly tables as a law for the tithing again, the tithe to eat before the Lord from year to year in the place where it is chosen that his name should dwell. And to this law there is no limit of days forever. The ordinance is written that it may be fulfilled from year to year in eating the second tithe before the Lord in the place where it hath been chosen, and nothing shall remain over from it from this year to the year following. For in its year shall the seed be eaten till the days of the gathering, the seed of the year, and the wine till the days of the wine, and the oil till the days of the season. And all that is left thereof and becometh old, let it be regarded as polluted, let it be burnt with fire, for it is unclean. And thus let them eat it together in the sanctuary, and let them not suffer it to become old. For all the tithes of the oxen and sheep shall be holy unto the Lord, and shall belong to his priest, which they will eat before him from year to year. For thus it is ordained and engraved regarding the tithe of the holy tables. And on the following night, on the twenty-second day of this month, Jacob resolved to build the place and to surround the court with a wall and to sanctify it, and make it holy forever for himself and for his children after. And the Lord appeared to him by night, and blessed him, and said unto him, Thy name shall not be called Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. So that's where we get the twelve tribes of Israel, the twelve descendants of Jacob through Isaac, through Abraham. And he said unto him again, I am the Lord who created the heaven and the earth, and I shall increase thee and multiply thee exceedingly. And kings will come forth from thee, and they will judge everywhere, wherever the foot of the sons of men hath trodden. And I shall give to thee seed of all the earth, which is under heaven, and they will judge all the nations according to their desires. And after that they will get possession of the whole earth and inherit it forever. And he finished speaking with them, and he went up from him, and Jacob looked till he had ascended into heaven. And he saw in a vision of the night, and beheld an angel descending from heaven with seven tables in his hand, and he gave them to Jacob. And he read them, and knew all that was written therein, which would befall him and his sons throughout all the ages. And he showed him all that was written on the tables, and said unto him, Do not build this place, and do not make it an eternal sanctuary, and do not dwell here, for this is not the place. Go to the house of Abraham thy father, and dwell with Isaac thy father, until the day of the death of thy father. For in Egypt thou wilt die in peace, and in this land thou wilt be buried with honor, in the sepulchre of thy fathers with Abraham and Isaac. 
Fear not, for as thou hast seen and read it, thus will it all be, and do thou write down everything as thou hast seen and read. And Jacob said, Lord, how can I remember all that I have read and seen? And he said unto him, I will bring all things to thy remembrance. And he went up from him, and he awoke from his sleep, and he remembered everything which he had read and seen, and he wrote down all the words which he had read and seen. And he celebrated there yet another day, and he sacrificed therein according to all that he sacrificed on the former days, and called its name Addition, for this day was added, and the former days he called the Feast. And thus it was manifested that it should be, and it is written on the heavenly tables, whereof it was revealed to him that he should celebrate it, and add it to the seven days of the Feast. And its name was called Addition, because that it was recorded amongst the days of the feast according to the number of the days of the years. And in the night, on the twenty-third day of this month, Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and they buried her beneath the city under the oak of the river. And he calls the name of this place the River of Deborah, and the oak, the oak of the morning of Deborah. And Rebekah went and returned to her house, to his father Isaac, and Jacob sent by her hand rams and sheets and he goats, and she should prepare a mill for his father, such as he desired. And he went after his mother till he came to the land of Cabraton and dwelled there. And Rachel bare a son in the night, and called the name Son of My Sorrow, for she suffered in giving him birth, but his father called his name Benjamin. On the eleventh of the eighth month, in the first year of the sixth week of this jubilee. And Rachel died there, and she was buried in the land of Ethrath, the same as Bethlehem. And Jacob built a pillar on the grave of Rachel, on the road above her grave. So this brings us to chapter 33. This is Reuben's sin with Bilhah and laws regarding incest and Jacob's children. And Jacob went and dwelt at the south of the Magdalidraf, and he went to his father Isaac, he and Leah his wife, on the new moon of the tenth month, because now Rachel has now passed away. Again, there's so much that's written in between the lines here. There's so much of the life that we're not seeing. I really wish somebody would make a movie out of this book and just add in. This is really a fantastic epic, and we know that Leah was his least favorite wife. If you remember, he had to marry Leah first because Leah was the oldest in order to then be able to marry Rachel, where Rachel was his true love. And of course, the other two wives were their handmaidens, so servants. And Reuben saw Bilhah, Rachel's maid and concubine of his father, bathing in water in a secret place and loved her. So it looks like this is... Rachel's maid, who has now passed away, Reuben is one of Jacob's sons, and Bilhah is Rachel's maid, who is also a concubine. They really did a lot of um, interesting things back in back in these days. But now Reuben is falling in love with his father's concubine. Whew, interesting. Like I said, this would make a great movie. And he hid himself at night and entered the house of Bilhah at night, and he found her sleeping alone on a bed in her house. And he lay with her, and she awoke and saw, and beheld Reuben was lying with her in the bed. And she uncovered the borders of her covering and seized him and cried out and discovered that it was Reuben. And she was ashamed because of him and released her hand from him, and he fled. And she laminated because of this thing exceedingly and did not tell it to anyone. And when Jacob returned and sought her, she said unto him, I am not clean for thee, for I have been defiled as regards thee. For Reuben hath defiled me, and hath laid with me in the night, and I was asleep, and did not discover until he uncovered my skirt and slept with me. And Jacob was exceedingly wroth with Reuben, because he had lain with Bilhah, and because he had uncovered his father's skirt. And Jacob did not approach her again, because Reuben had defiled her. And as for any man who uncovereth his father's skirt, his deed is wicked exceedingly, for he is abominable before the Lord. For this reason it is written and ordained on the heavenly tables that a man should not lie with his father's wife and should not uncover his father's skirt, for this is unclean. They shall surely die together, the man who lieth with his father's wife and the woman also, for they have wrought uncleanliness on the earth. And there shall be nothing unclean before our God in the nation which he hath chosen for himself as a possession. And again, 
it is written a second time, Cursed be he who lieth with the wife of his father, for he hath uncovered his father's shame. And all the holy ones of the Lord said, So be it, so be it. And do thou, Moses, command the children of Israel that they observe this word, for it is a punishment of death, and it is unclean, and there is no atonement forever to atone for the man who hath committed this, but he is to be put to death and slain, and stoned with stones and rooted out from the midst of the people of our God. For to no man who doeth so in Israel is permitted to remain alive a single day on the earth, for he is abominable and unclean. And let them not say to Reuben, was granted life and forgiveness after he had lain with his father's concubine, and to her also, though she had a husband, and to her husband Jacob his father was still alive. For until that time there had been not revealed the ordinance and the judgment and law and its completeness for all, but in thy days it hath been revealed, as a law of season and of days, and an everlasting law for the everlasting generations." For this law there is no consumption of days and no atonement for it, but they must both be rooted out in the midst of the nation on the day whereon they committed it, they shall slay them. And do thou, Moses, write it down for Israel, that they may observe it, and do according to these words, and not commit a sin unto death. For the Lord our God is judge, who respecteth not person, and accepteth not gifts." You can't bribe God, remember? So he's basically saying no incest. That incest is an abomination. And you can't bribe God, which we know now what the Canaanites do. So this makes even more sense, even though we know incest is incredibly gross and wrong. So verse 19, And tell them these words of the covenant that they may hear and observe and be on their guard with respect to them and not be destroyed and rooted out of the land for an uncleanliness and an abomination and a contamination and a pollution are they who committed on the earth before our God. And there is no greater sin than the fornication which they commit on earth. For Israel is a holy nation unto the Lord its God, and a nation of inheritance, and a priestly and royal nation for his own possessions. And there shall no such uncleanliness appear in the midst of a holy nation. And I apologize if you hear my dog walking around. He's been a very good boy listening to me read this book. So I apologize if you hear him getting up and walking around. And in the third year of the sixth week, Jacob and all his sons went and dwelt in the house of Abraham near Isaac his father and Rebekah his mother. And these were the names of the son of Jacob, the firstborn, Reuben, then Simeon, Levi, Judah, Ishchar, Zeblon, the sons of Leah. And the sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin, the sons of Bilhan, Dan, and Naphtali, and the sons of Zilpah, Gad, and Asher, and Dina, the daughter of Leah, the only daughter of Jacob. And they came and bowed themselves to Isaac and Rebekah, their paternal grandparents. And they saw them, they blessed Jacob and all his sons, and Isaac rejoiced exceedingly, for he saw the sons of Jacob, his younger son, and he blessed them. This brings us to chapter 34. A war of the Amorite kings against Jacob and his sons, Joseph sold into Egypt the death of Bilhan and Dina. So we talked a little bit about the Amorites a long, long, long time ago um, when we did a Mystery Monday over the uh, unidentified mummy in Egypt. I'll see if I can find that video and place it in the de description box where basically it got into like the Amorites and how, I think it was the Amorites or it might have been the Hivites. Anyway, I'll place the video in the description box, but one of the princes from one of these tribes was thought to perhaps be this unidentified mummy. And it got into some fascinating archaeology where at first they thought some of these Amorite, Hivite tribes weren't necessarily real. They might have been fictitious in a lot of these religious texts, but then these archaeologists found all this stuff that proved that these tribes really did exist, and so super fascinating. Anyway, all right, chapter 34. In the sixth year of this week, of this 44th jubilee, Jacob sent his sons to pasture their sheep and his servants with them to the pastures of Shechem. And the seven kings of the Amorites assembled themselves together against them to slay them, hiding themselves under the trees and to take their cattle as a prey. 
And Jacob and Levi and Judah and Joseph were in the house with Isaac their father. For his spirit was sorrowful, and they could not leave him. And Benjamin was the youngest, for this reason remained with his father. And there came the kings of Tafu, the kings of Arsia, the kings of Sarajin, the kings of Selio, and the kings of Gaza, and the king of Bethreon, and the kings of Maniascar, and all those who dwell in these mountains, and who dwell in the land of Canaan. So again, I apologize if I said those names wrong. It is what it is. Basically, the Amorites who were part of this Canaanite land. And they announced this to Jacob, saying, Behold, the kings of the Amorites have surrounded thy sons and plundered their herds. And he arose from his house, and he and his three sons, and all the servants of his father and his own servants, and he went, and he went against them with six thousand men who carried swords. And he slew them in the pastures of Shechem, and pursued those who fled. And he slew them with the edge of the sword, and he slew Arsia, and Tofu, and Saragin, and Selio, and Amaskar, and Gages, and he recovered his herds. And he prevailed over them, and imposed tribute on them, that they should pay him tribute, five fruit products of their land, and he built Robel and Tamarets. And he returned in peace, and made peace with them, and they became his servants, until the day he and his sons went into Egypt. And in the seventh year of this week, he sent Joseph to learn about the welfare of his brother from his house to the land of Shechem, and he found them in the land of Dothan. And they dwelt treacherously with him and formed a plot against him to slay him. But changing their minds, they sold him to the Ishmaelite merchants, and they brought him down into Egypt, and they sold him to Potiphar, the eunuch of Pharaoh, the chief of the cooks, priest of the city of Elu. And the sons of Jacob slaughtered a kid and dipped the coat of Joseph in the blood and sent it to Jacob their father on the tenth of the seventh month. And he mourned all that night for they had brought it to him in the evening and he became feverish with the mourning for his death. And he said an evil beast hath devoured Joseph and all the members of his house mourned with him that day and they were grieving and mourning with him all that day. And his sons and his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted for his son. And on that day, Bilhan heard that Joseph had perished, and she died mourning him. And she was living in Kafret. And Dina also, his daughter, died after Joseph had perished. And there came these three mournings upon Israel in one month. And they buried Bilhan over against the tomb of Rachel. And Dina also, his daughter, they buried there. And he mourned for Joseph one year and did not cease, for he said, Let me go down and grave the mourning for my son. For this reason it is ordained for the children of Israel that they should afflict themselves on the tenth of the seventh month, on the day that made him weep for Joseph, came to Jacob his father, that they should make atonements for themselves thereon with a young goat on the tenth of the seventh month, once a year for their sins, for they have grieved the affection of their father regarding Joseph his son. And this day hath been ordained that they should grieve thereon for their sins and for all their transgressions and for all their errors, so that they might cleanse themselves on that day once a year. And after Joseph perished, the sons of Jacob took unto themselves wives. The name of Reuben's wife is Ada. The name of Simeon's wife is Adiba, a Canaanite. And the name of Levi's wife is Melchah, the daughter of Aran and the seed of the sons of Terah, the name of Judah's wife, Bet Betasuel, a Canaanite, and the name of Ishkar's wife, Hezadah, the name of Zebulon's wife, Nehemiah, and the name of Dan's wife, Egla, and the name of Naphtali's wife, Rasu, of Mesopotamia, and the name of Gad's wife, Makkah, the name of Asher's wife, Ejonah, and the name of Joseph's wife, Asenath, the Egyptian, the name of Benjamin's wife, Ijaska. And Simeon repented and took a second wife from Mesopotamia as his brothers. So we got a couple of Canaanite wives in there. That's interesting. And once again, I hope I said those names right. I probably didn't, but that's okay. So this brings us to chapter 35, which we are going to read through today. We covered six chapters today. 
But here we go. Rebecca's last admonitions and death. And in the first year of the first week of the 45th Jubilee, Rebecca called Jacob her son and commanded him regarding his father and regarding his brother that he should honor them all the days of his life. And Jacob said, I will do everything as thou hast commanded me. For this thing will be honor and greatness to me and righteousness before the Lord that I should honor them. And thou too, mother, knowest from the time I was born until this day, all my deeds and all that is in my heart, that I always think good concerning all. And how should I not do this thing which thou hast commanded me, that I should honor my father and my brother? Tell me, mother, what perversity hast thou seen in me, that I shall turn away from it, and mercy will be upon me? And she said unto him, My son, I have not seen in thee all my days any perverse, but only upright deeds. And yet I should tell thee the truth, my son. I shall die this year, and I shall not survive this year in my life, for I have seen in a dream the day of my death. And I should not live beyond a hundred and fifty-five years. And behold, I have completed all the days of my life, which I am to live. And Jacob laughed at the words of his mother, because his mother had said unto him that he should die. And she was sitting opposite to him in the possession of her strength. And she was not infirm in her strength, for she went in and out and saw, and her teeth were strong, and no ailment had touched her all the days of her life. And Jacob said unto her, Blessed am I, mother, if my days approach the days of thy life, and my strength remain with me thus, as thy strength, and thy will not die, for thou art jesting idly with me regarding thy death. And she went unto Isaac and said unto him, One petition I make unto thee, make Esau swear that he will not in injure Jacob, nor pursue him with enmity, for thou knowest Esau's thoughts, that they are perverse from his youth. And there is no goodness in him, for he desireth after thy death to kill him. And thou knowest all that he hath done since the day Jacob his brother went to Haran until this day. Now he hath forsaken us with his whole heart, and hath done evil to us. Thy flocks he hath taken to himself, and carried off all thy possessions from before thy face. And when we implore and besought him for what was our own, he did as a man who was taking pity on us. And he is bitter against thee, because he blessed Jacob, thy perfect and upright son, for there is no evil but only goodness in him. And since he came from Haran until this day, he hath not robbed us of aught. For he bringeth us everything in its season always, and rejoice with all his heart, when he take at his hands, and blesseth us, and hath not parted from us since he came from Haran until this day. And he remaineth with us continually at home, honoring us." And Isaac said unto her, I too know and see the deeds of Jacob, who is with us, how with all his heart he honoreth us. But I loved Esau formerly more than Jacob, because he was the firstborn. But now I love Jacob more than Esau, for he hath done manyfold evil deeds. And there is no righteousness in him, for all his ways are unrighteousness and violence, and there is no righteousness around him. And now my heart is troubled because all his deeds, and neither he nor his seed is to be saved, for they are those who will be destroyed from the earth, and who will be rooted out from under heaven, for he hath forsaken the God of Abraham, and gone after his wives, and after their uncleanliness, and after their error, he and his children. And now dost bid me to make him swear that he will not slay Jacob, his brother, even if he swears he will not abide by his oath, and he will not do good but evil only. But if he desireth to slay Jacob his brother, into Jacob's hand will he be given, for he will not escape from his hands, for he will descend into his hands. And fear thou not on account of Jacob, for the guardian of Jacob is great and powerful and honored, and praised more than the guardian of Esau. And Rebekah sent and called Esau, and he came to her, and she said unto him, I have a petition, my son, to make unto thee, and do thou promise to do it, my son. And he said, I will do everything that thou sayest unto me, and I will not refuse thy petition. And she said unto him, I ask that the day I die, thou wilt take me in and bury me near Sarah, thy father's mother, and that thou and Jacob will love each other. 
and that neither will desire evil against the other, but mutually love only. And so ye will prosper, my sons, and be honored in the midst of the land. And no enemy will rejoice over you, and ye will be a blessing and a mercy in the eyes of all those that love you. And he said, I will do all that thou hast told me, and I shall bury thee on the day thou diest near Sarah, my father's mother, as thou hast desired that her bones may be near thy bones. And Jacob, my brother, also I shall love above all flesh, for I have not a brother in all the earth, but in him only. For this is no great merit for me if I love him, for he is my brother, and we were sown together in thy body. And together came forth from thy womb, and if I do not love my brother, whom shall I love? And I myself beg thee to exhort Jacob concerning me and concerning my sons, for I know that he assuredly will be king over me and my sons. For on the day my father blessed him, he made him the higher and me the lower. And I swear unto thee that I shall love him, and not desire evil against him in all the days of my life, but good only. And he swore unto her regarding all this matter. And she called Jacob before the eyes of Esau, and gave him commandment according to the words which she spoke to Esau. And he said, I shall do thy pleasure. Believe me that no evil will proceed from me or from my sons against Esau, and I shall be the first in the knot, save only in love. And they ate and drank, and she and her sons that night, and she died three jubilees, and one week, and one year old, on that night. And her two sons, Esau and Jacob, buried her in a double cave near Sarah, their father's mother. And that ends our reading for today. Thank you so much for sitting through this reading. I hope you all are having a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank you again to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase the opening song, there is a link down in the description box below. And again, thank you to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys. I'm also going to try to find the video with Melissa Redpill and Nikki Clan where they go into Jacob and the tribes of Israel. That should be, hopefully, will be in the description box below if I can get my hands on it. So be looking out for that. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.